Hi, my name is Pete Hahn, and thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hahn-tech.com for the full library of video tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. In today's video, I'm going to be showing another example of using the Thinkorswim scan utility. We're starting off in the Charts tab so that I can show you the custom indicator that I've built based upon the TTM squeeze histogram. Now, you don't need to have access to the source code for the TTM squeeze in order to be able to write custom scans for the TTM squeeze. You can see I've got plotted the TTM squeeze indicator and I've got a weekly chart on the left and a daily chart on the right. So let's dig into the code for the scan TTM squeeze hist study that I've got here. We'll go to studies, edit studies, and we'll click on the little scroll icon to the left of the name of the study, and that will open up the ThinkScript editor. Now this little statement here where we access the TTM squeeze histogram even though we don't have access to the TTM squeeze source code. We'll hit cancel here and then we'll get back into this study that I created the TTM squeeze histogram and we'll press cancel again. Let's just look at the chart. I've got the code set up to plot a spike and the, and the spikes are just changing values from 0 to 1 so it's just essentially true or false and so you see a spike anytime that we have two consecutive bars above the zero line after the histogram has crossed from below the zero line to above the zero line and if you look at this spike over here down here this one is a little more clear easier to see and what you have is the histogram rising from the underneath the zero line crossing above the zero line and then on the second bar that closes above the zero line, you get that little spike. So that's how I have it set up. Now, if you want to find the opposite, which would be places where it crosses below the zero line, I've got that set up in the study, and I'll show you how to edit that. Press the scroll icon, scroll down to the very bottom, and here I've got it set up so that you just put a little hash tag in front of a line and it essentially turns it off. It turns it into a comment. So I've got four different types of scans available in a single piece of code. You can do the pivot high and low of the histogram or you can do a zero line crossover with a follow through. Okay. Right now the one that's turned on is a zero line positive follow through. Now if we turn that off, we can just put a hashtag in front of that and we'll get an error because we need to have at least one plot statement. Then we'll take out the comment mark for the zero line negative follow through. We'll hit apply and OK. And we'll hit apply and OK. And let's examine the spikes on the lower indicator. We see that they occur when the histogram for the TTM squeeze crosses from above the zero line to below the zero line and we get that second bar follow through and as it occurs here as well and all the way to the right of the chart we have another example of that. So I have two more plots that we can do with this same study so let's go back into studies and edit studies and click on the scroll icon and scroll down to the bottom of the code and let's turn off the one for the zero line negative follow through. Put a hashtag in front of that and it turns it off. Now we'll turn on, let's see, the pivot high follow through. So we'll uncomment that and we'll hit apply and OK. And apply and OK. You can see we get quite a few more spikes in the lower indicator here. And I'll show you what's happening right here at the very right. Let's go to these two because they're pretty easy to see. What this indicator is now set up to show you is any time that the histogram, the TTM squeeze, moves from higher values to lower values. 
So you can see when it changes from a bright blue to a dark blue, it's actually a pivot, a pivot high, where it's changing direction from higher values to lower values. And what we do with the code is we pick up the second bar follow through after that's occurred. So it's not going to pick up single bar movements. It's going to need to have two consecutive bars lower in order for it to pick up the signal. I'll show you a couple of more here. So again, it's going higher and higher and higher, and then it goes lower for two bars, and we get a spike. And then it changes direction again. It goes higher for a couple of bars, and then we get two lower bars consecutive, and we get another spike. Now I'll flip this around. We'll go to Studies, Edit Studies, go to Scan, um, click the scroll icon, scroll down to the bottom of the code. We can turn off that scan and we'll turn on the one that catches pivot lows. Now we'll hit Apply and OK. Apply and OK. Now let's review the lower indicator and compare it to the TTM squeeze. Let's look at this one right here. This is pretty easy to spot. You have a pivot low with the histogram and on the second follow through bar of higher histogram values, then you have a little spike in the indicator. And it's going to occur here as well. And because you have a pivot, this is actually, it's above the zero line, but it is a pivot low because you have uh, lower values on the histogram followed by two consecutive bars of higher value. So it picks this up as well. It doesn't have to be below the zero line for this indicator to pick up a change in the histogram direction. Again, here is another example. You've got two bars of lower values on the histogram followed by at least two bars of higher values and it creates a little spike. Okay, so that's how the indicator works. I can dig into the code for you, but you know what? I'm just going to link the code. You can download it from my uh, Google Drive. And if you need to know more about the code, you know, drop me a note, uh, drop me a message. Uh, if, if you guys leave messages in the comments or you can contact me through my Google Plus page or my Facebook page for Hontech LLC. You know, if you're, one, if you're really interested in me drilling down into the code and explaining it step by step, I can show you that and we'll do a video on that. But uh, only if you guys are interested. I know a lot of people don't like the code. It makes, gives them a headache and whatnot. Trust me, it gives me a headache too. But uh, so next, we'll show you how to incorporate this into a scan and run the scan, and then we'll examine the output from the scan. All right, so hang on. Okay, before we get started, I'll mention a few items here. One will be a disclaimer. Uh, the other will be a mention of a couple of videos. If you don't already know how to take the code that I'm going to link for you and install it on your Thinkorswim platform, there's a couple of videos that you need to watch. Okay, so first, the disclaimer. I am not a professional trader. I'm not trying to show you how to make buy or sell decisions on Thinkorswim. I am not trying to recommend buying or selling any financial instrument at all. If you need to learn how to trade or learn how to use these indicators to make trades in the market, there are professionals out there that are teaching people how to do so, and I highly recommend that you avail yourself of their services. Okay, uh, the other item, I mentioned a couple of videos. Now, if you don't know how to install this code that I'm going to link for you, then there's a couple of videos I've already done. One of them is called the TTS CCI Ricochet Demo. And the other video is called the Display Name of Saved Chart. And I will link both of those videos here in the annotations so you can click directly on them and get directly over there so that you can get up to speed on how to install this indicator on your Thinkorswim platform. Okay, so the rest of this video assumes that you know how to install and have already installed the TTM Squeeze uh, Scan Indicator on your Thinkorswim platform. I will show now how to take the code from that study and copy and paste it into the Scan tab and build a custom scan based around this study. So we'll go to Studies and Edit Studies, and we'll click the scroll icon for the Scan Study. And I'm simply going to use a keyboard shortcut to select all the text, 
in the code box. You can also do that with your mouse if you like. I'm going to right click and select copy and from here we can simply click cancel twice. Now we have that code on the clipboard we can go to the scan and you can see I've already got this set up. I'm going to intersect with a category all optionable. I've got the last set up a uh, filter for last set up as 25 to 500 and I've got a filter also for the average volume. All we need to do now is click add study filter and from the selection click custom move over to the tab for the ThinkScript editor erase the text that's already there we can right click now and select paste and I'm going to set this up. I'm going to turn off this one. I'm going to turn on the positive, the zero line positive follow through. Okay, the error warning goes away. I want to show you now there's four possible scans that you can run with this code, and you can only run one at a time. Let me show you what happens if you accidentally uncomment two of them at the same time. You will get an error message. The code won't work. So keep that in mind. Make sure you only have one of the scans turned on. Now we'll click OK. We want to make sure that the aggregation period is set to something that we want. Now I want you to realize that on the chart, remember I showed you the left one is a weekly and the right one is a daily. You can set this aggregation period for your scan right here it's set to daily on mine and you can change it to weekly if you want. So depending on what type of time frame you want to work on, you can change that. We'll click OK and now that drops it in and we have our three filters set up for our scan. Now I will press the scan button and we'll see the results. All right, the scan is complete. We've got 10 stocks showing. If you click this button to the right, you can save it as a watch list. So I'm just going to put a zero so it floats to the top of the list of my watch lists. And I'm just going to call it Squeeze Histogram Scan. And hit Save. And that makes it real easy. I can just pick it right up out of here and select it from my list. There it is right there. That's the watch list that I just saved to my list. So now that's the list of stocks from our scan. We'll go back to charts and because these are linked then I can simply click on each of these and review them as I need to. Before we review the stocks in the list let's go ahead and update that study that's on the bottom because we want it to match the criteria we used for our scan. Remember on the scan, I turned off this one and I turned on this one. So now we'll hit apply and OK, apply and OK. And now our lower indicator is lined up with the way we ran the scan. So you can see the spike at the very end. The, uh, the bar that's uh, all the way to the right is the one that triggers it and it's got a second follow through bar after crossing above the zero line. That's the way we ran the scan. So let's review each of these. This one you can't really even tell by looking at it. The values are so small but if I hover the cursor over the bar you can see that we have two consecutive bars above zero after being below zero. So three bars back were below zero and then we have two consecutive bars above zero. Again we have a cross and two consecutive bars higher and I'll just click through the rest of these so that you can see the result of the scan. Now if you've seen the previous videos that I've done on custom scans, you know that you can apply additional filters. So you can go ahead and use moving averages, you know, one moving average above another to try and develop an idea of trend. So that way you can kind of filter out the stuff that you don't want this type of scan to pick up. 
Okay, that's all I've got to show you. I uh, hope this helps, and I hope that uh, you guys get a lot of utility from this. And I hope that it helps you understand a little bit more how to customize your Thinkorswim platform to do a lot of the grunt work for you. Take care, everyone. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hondashtech.com for the full library of tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Thanks, and take care.